This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now, another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Conrad, I believe you said this story has a surprise ending. That it has, Ken. And it's an intriguing story to boot. Our play is entitled The Trial of Gregory Winslow. And our first act curtain will rise after this very important message. Air Force enlistments have been restricted for a long time, but they're open again now. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist in the United States Air Force today. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Gregory Winslow, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Trial of Gregory Winslow. Gregory Winslow is one of the most brilliant lawyers that ever stood before a jury. Had he turned his talents to acting, there's no doubt he would have ranked among the theater greats of his time. But Winslow chose the courtroom for his stage, the judge, the jury, the spectators, his audience. Because of his skill, Gregory Winslow was a wealthy and envied man. However, he was not a well-liked man, whether he acted in the interest of the defense or the prosecution. But two urges drove him, the desire for wealth and the desire to win, regardless of the tactics used. Each fed upon the other and filled Gregory Winslow with a hunger he could never seem to satisfy. Order in the courtroom. Order, I say. If I hear another outbreak such as this, I'll have the court cleared. You may proceed, Mr. Winslow. Thank you, Your Honor. I have little else to add to my summation. I'm ready to leave the whole thing in your hands, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Is she guilty or is she not? I say she is. I think I have proved that though she may sit there before you looking crushed and defeated, I am convinced that in the cold viciousness of her heart she feels no pity, no remorse for what she's done. I say it is we who should feel pity for her. Well, enough of this. My case stands. Now it's for you to decide. Thank you. suppose I should congratulate you. Not necessary. Another brilliant case for the great Mr. Winslow. <laughs> What's the matter, Irwin? Aren't you a good loser? You don't care that she wasn't guilty, do you? It was your job to prove. Don't come crying to me because you couldn't do it. Jury found her guilty. You know, you took from that woman the only thing in this world she really cares about. You're making me weep. <laughs> it's the first time I've hit anyone since I was a kid in school. Sorry, I didn't do it sooner. Well, you... Uh, you get out of here. Sure, I'll get out. It's just a wonder to me that you stay alive. Despite what the press and most people think about you, you're nothing but a cheap tin horn uh, crook. You're a disgrace you... to the profession. Get out of here, Evan. Get out of here before I have you thrown out. Gladly. I hope someday it all catches up with you, Winslow. Truly, I do. Can't thank you enough, Mr. Winslow. Here's your money. You'll find that I've added a bit to the original sum. What you did is worth it. Well, that's nice of you, Mr. Hunt. I always like to please. Uh, you're, you're magnificent. I'd heard you were good, but I never dreamed that good. <laughs> you know, you nearly had me believing you. <laughs> if I'd really been good, I'd have had you believing it. I, uh, uh, Something the matter, Mr. Winslow? Well, uh, 
Uh, no, no, I, I guess not. I uh, just got a little dizzy for a second. I'll be all right. Yeah, let me get you a drink. Yes, yes, that might help. Funny, I, I never felt like this before. Something you ate, probably. Yes, yes, that must be is. Uh, Mr. Winslow. Mr. Winslow, what is it? Yes, Doctor. Will you tell Dr. Freiberg we're ready? Where, where, where am I? What, 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 what's the matter? You're going to be all right, Mr. Winslow. Just keep calm. But but what happened? I, I don't understand. We're going to operate on you, Mr. Winslow. You're here in the hospital. The, the hospital? It do, doesn't make sense. Where's Hunt? Where, now, just where's relax the, the... and breathe deeply. Uh, try counting to ten. Oh, no, but I... Count to ten, Mr. Winslow. One... Two, three. Order in the court. Order, I say. You may bring the defendant forward. Say, wait a minute. What goes on here? What's the idea? Take your hands off me. Your Honor, what's this all about? Mr. Gregory Winslow, isn't it? Yes, that's right, but I... Mr. I want... Winslow... You have been brought before this court on a very serious charge. I have? Are you choking? What court is this, anyway? Mr. Winslow, I'll have to ask you to remain silent until I've finished. I have no desire to hold you in contempt. You have been accused, Mr. Winslow, of one of the gravest crimes known to mankind. I... I, I what crime? The crime of inhumanity. How do you plead, Mr. Winslow? Guilty? Or not guilty. Are you crazy? I, I, I beg your pardon, Your Honor, but in, in all my years of practicing law, I've never heard of anything like this. Is, is this a joke? This is no joke, Mr. Winslow. You may not have heard of such a crime. However, here in this court, you are to be tried on the charge of inhumanity. How do you plead, sir? Huh? Well, I... <laughs> I'm not guilty, of course. The defendant pleads not guilty to the charge. I think we are ready to proceed. You may sit down, Mr. Winslow. I assume, being a lawyer, you will wish to plead your own case. Why, yeah, yes, yes, that's right, Your Honor. Uh, may I ask what court this is? This is the court of every man, Mr. Winslow. Will the prosecution proceed? <clears throat> Your Honor, we have found there are 62 witnesses for the prosecution. However, to save the court's time, we've narrowed this number down to four. With these four witnesses and one other, we shall prove to the court's satisfaction that the defendant, Gregory Winslow, is guilty as charged. Will Miss Mary Rogers please step to the stand? Well, I, I don't get it. I've never seen a courtroom like this. There must be thousands of people out there. Uh, but where's the jury? They're all the jury. What? Mr. Winslow, this is the last time I'll caution you. But Your Honor, if, if, if I'm to be tried on this, this trumped-up charge, when do I get a chance to prepare my case? When your turn comes, Mr. Winslow, you shall have all the time you need. We do things a bit differently here, as you shall soon have the opportunity to see. Ha! Huh. Continue, sir. Your name is? Mary Rogers. How long have you been here, Miss Rogers? Nearly four years. Do you recognize the defendant? Yes. Gregory Winslow. Objection. I've never seen this woman before in my life. Objection overruled. Continue. Would you mind telling the court, Miss Rogers, when it was and under what circumstances you met Mr. Winslow? It was nearly four years ago. I came to his office... Well, sit down, Miss Miss Rogers, is that it? Yes. Thank you. Now, how can I be of service? Well, my brother is is Frank Rogers. Oh, no, there, there, Miss Rogers. Calm yourself. Frank Rogers, eh? <laughs> oh, you you want me to defend him? Oh, yes, would you? Oh, oh please say that you will. Uh, do you think he did it? Oh, no, I know he didn't. Do you have any proof? No, but but I just know. Uh, well, now, how much can you pay, Miss Rogers? Well, I have a little money saved up, and I can borrow some. 
It's not very much. I don't work for love, you know. It's not an easy thing to defend a man accused of murder, especially when it seems like such an open and shut case. I know, but you... Oh, Mr. Winslow, you, you must take the oh, case. No, 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 please, Miss Rogers, no tears. Save them for the courtroom. Uh, how much can you pay right now? About... about $500? 500? Five hundred. Five... <laughs> My dear young lady... <laughs> I'm afraid you've come to the wrong office. I know it's not much to you, but... Well, you have so much. Please, couldn't you find it in your heart to do this? I I might find it in my heart, Miss Rogers, but certainly not in my pocket. In all things, I'm guided by my pocket. The court will assign a good lawyer to your brother, and if he's innocent, he'll go free. He won't do it? No, no, I can't do it. I can't afford it. If I did this once, then everyone with a cross to bear would be flocking in here to see me. Now, excuse me, I have an appointment. Then what did you do, Miss Rogers? I went back to the prison and saw Frank. I told him. He was very despondent anyway. He didn't seem to care anymore. Later, they they tried him, and he was convicted to serve a life sentence. I couldn't stand it. I, I came here. Thank you, Miss Rogers. Your witness. Uh, <clears throat> Miss... Uh... Miss Rogers, I'm sorry I didn't remember when I first saw you. I see so many people. Um, Miss Rogers, did anyone ever prove your brother was innocent? Objection. Frank Rogers is not on trial here. Your Honor, I'm merely trying to point out that I can in no way be judged for not taking a case that was doubtful to begin with. My doubts were verified later by 12 good men and true. Mr. Winslow, you are accused of inhumanity. If you can question the witness to prove otherwise, do so. If not, I'll ask the prosecution to proceed. But, Your Honor, what is inhuman about refusing a case? That is for the court to decide. Miss Rogers, did you feel it was inhuman of me not to accept your case? Would you, had you been in my position, done differently? Had you refused me politely, had you been kind about it, I don't think it would have hurt so much. But you were cruel and cold and utterly heartless. You were more interested in your pocket. I can't answer your second question. I think I would have done what I could to help. I should like to call my next witness, Henry Tyler. Henry Tyler? Henry Tyler? Where did I meet him? I wish I could figure this thing out. I, I don't like it. Seems more like a dream, a nightmare. What is your name? Henry Tyler. How long have you been here? Three years. Do you recognize the defendant? Yes, sir. He's right over there. Would you mind telling the court when it was and under what circumstances you met the defendant? It was a little more than three years ago. It was about my property. <laughs> This is my property, Mr. Winslow, and they're trying to take it away from me. Yes, I see. Uh, you realize such a case will be quite expensive. My fee is low, Mr. Tyler. And I, I figured that. I, I've got some bonds, some life insurance I can cash in on. Uh, would $5,000 cover it? <laughs> no, no, I'm afraid it wouldn't. Uh, not in a case of this sort. Well, then I, I'll just have to get another lawyer. Yes, guess you will. I shouldn't think you'd have too much trouble, though. You're not really interested in helping out folks, are you? Of course I am, Mr. Tyler. The right folks. What happened after that, Mr. Tyler? The case went to court. I lost. They took my house, everything I had. Soon after that, I came here. Who was the lawyer who argued the case against your claim? He was Gregory Winslow. Gregory Winslow? <laughs> That will do. Your witness? Mr. Tyler, was there anything inhuman against my not taking your case? No, not on the face of it. Was there anything inhuman, then, in my representing the client who opposed you? No, I guess there wasn't. But you knew it was my property. I knew nothing of the sort. In fact, I proved the contrary. Your Honor, as long as this question has arisen, I should like to point out that the prosecution was about to prove that the defendant deliberately approached the client he represented because he knew the client could pay well. If Mr. Winslow would like me to bring witnesses to prove this point, I'll be glad to. Do you deny that, Mr. Winslow? No. 
No, I don't deny it. Well, is there anything wrong in trying to earn a living? The court will now recess. We shall reconvene. <laughs> Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Gregory Winslow in the Proudly We Hail production, The Trial of Gregory Winslow, will return in just a moment for the second act. I have a message for the young men of America. Enlist in the United States Air Force. By doing this right now, when the Air Force is expanding, you have the opportunity to really get ahead. The Air Force needs specialists in radar, radio, weather, aircraft maintenance, and numerous other technical fields. Yes, the Air Force can train you for one of its many technical jobs. Go to the nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with a recruiting sergeant. Find out for yourself the advantages you can gain by enlisting in the Air Force now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the title role, we present the second act of The Trial of Gregory Winslow. court will come to order. The prosecution may proceed. I should like to call for my next witness, Alice Graham. Your name is? Alice Graham. How long have you been here? A little over two years. Do you recognize the defendant? I do. Would you tell the court where and under what circumstances you met? It was a little over two years ago. I went to... Well, Miss Graham, aren't you in the wrong office? It's your husband who's my client. I came to you because I had to. I know how good you are in a courtroom. You can make white look black. Well, thank you, but I... I know that you'll make Charles look like an angel, and you'll make me look like... <laughs> oh, no, now, come, come, Mrs. Graham. Listen, Mr. Winslow. If there's one thing in this world that means anything to me, it's my baby. If you take him away from me, well... Mrs. Graham, your husband retained me. He wants the child, and it's my job to see that that's just what he gets. I know that. And that's why I came here, to, to see if there was anything that would make you drop the case. If I've committed a crime, it was to marry the wrong man. I haven't done anything else, and I want my baby. Don't you have a lawyer? Yes, but what can he do against you? I'm flattered. Oh, stop it! How much money will you take for you to drop the case? Hmm. Hmm. Very unethical, you know. Uh, your husband is paying me 50000 I have about one quarter of that. Hmm. Well, that's too bad. I'd really like to help you. You won't drop the case. Under the circumstances, no. And you'll go into that court tomorrow and prove that I'm an, an evil woman when you know perfectly well that I'm not. I'll go into court tomorrow to win for my client, that's all. No, that's not all. You'll win and he'll get my baby and you'll kill me. Oh, come now. After all, perhaps some arrangement can be made so that you can visit the child once in a while. There's nothing to make you change your mind? No, no, I'm afraid not, Miss Graham. I... See in court. And what happened after that, Mrs. Graham? He won the case for my husband. I lost my child. I had a weak heart. The strain was too much. I didn't care anyway. I came here. Your witness? Uh, Mrs. Graham, what do you mean when you say you came here? Well, don't you know? I mean that Objection! I... That has nothing to do with the case. Objection sustained. Continue, Mr. Winslow. What? Well, I... Oh, I... I have no more questions. For my next witness, I'd like to call John Merlin. John Merlin? I've never heard that name before. I know it. Look, maybe I'm going crazy, but... But am I dead? Your name is John Merlin? That's right. How long have you been here? Not quite a year. Do you know the defendant? No, I don't. Would you tell the court how you got here? I was a teller in the First National. There was a holdup. A man named Philip Kramer shot me. Would you care to ask the witness any questions, Mr. Winslow? Why, uh, no. Very well. Step down, Mr. Merlin. My final witness is the defendant himself, Mr. Gregory Winslow. Me? Yeah, but, but that's not... That... Will you please take the stand? 
Your name? Right, well, don't I get sworn in? That's not necessary in this court. Oh. Well, my name is Gregory Winslow. You've not been here before? Before? Why, no, no, not that I know of. Did you recognize Mr. Merlin? He told you he didn't know me. I don't know him. But you did recognize the name Philip Kramer, didn't you? Yes. Yes, it was one of my biggest cases. I defended it. And the jury found him not guilty of the charge, which I believe was murder. Mr. Winslow, was Philip Kramer guilty as charged? The jury didn't think so. That does not answer my question. I refuse to answer it. Very well, since you refuse, we will show the court the answer. This scene took place in Mr. Winslow's home. Who's there? You, Winslow. What the devil do you mean, breaking into a man's house in the middle of the night? I want to hire you. Well, my office hours are not from midnight till four. Who are you? Now, just cool off. I'm a guy that can pay, and I'm in a jam. A big jam. I need an alibi, and I need one fast. You say you can pay. What do you mean by that? Name your price. What's the charge? Murder. Anybody see you do it? No, I don't think so, but they'll pick me up on it. It's a long story. You want to hear it? For a hundred grand, I could be persuaded. Huh. You don't come cheap, do you? Not to get a man off for murder, I don't. Would the prosecution please tell the court what this scene has to do with the witness, John Merlin? Yes, Your Honor. Because Gregory Winslow was able to convince the court that Philip Kramer was innocent, he was set free. A month later, John Merlin was shot and killed by this same Kramer. Had Winslow refused to take his case and turned them over to the police, this never would have happened. Then, then I am dead. There is no need here to dwell on a long summation. I think the evidence speaks for itself. Gregory Winslow, a brilliant and gifted man used his talents not for good, but for evil. He had no love for his fellow man, no desire to help anyone. Although it is true Mr. Winslow defended many innocent people, it was always done for a price and not for an honest desire to see justice done. As he himself said, he was more interested in his pocket than his heart. An empty pocket and an emptier heart. I ask the court to bring in a verdict of guilty. I ask for the maximum penalty. Thank you. Mr. Winslow, do you care to say anything? Yes. Yes, I would, Your Honor. People of the court, I should first like to change my plea from not guilty to guilty. Yes. Yes, I am guilty as charged. Guilty of all you say. It's a shocking and terrible thing to see the scenes of your crimes pass before you when you'd all but forgotten them. I have no excuse for the things I did. I was driven by an urge that was evil. And I was too weak to overcome it. I can call no witness in my defense, for there are none. I do have a plea, however. I don't know what your sentence will mean to me, but, but I think I can guess. Whatever it is, there'll not be another chance to do any good for my fellow man. I know now that, that I had many chances and destroyed them. So I'm asking the court for another. Let me go back. Let me go back. And in the time I have left, I shall work as I never have before for the benefit of mankind. I know I can't undo what I've done, but there will be many I can help. If, if you refuse to let me return, I'm lost forever. And what I could do, and never did do, will be lost, too. I... 
I... That's all I have to say, Your Honor. Mr. Winslow, will you please face the court? Has the court reached a verdict? They have, Your Honor. How do you find the defendant? Well, Doctor, that was a close one, wasn't it? I thought we were going to lose, Mr. Winslow. He's tougher than he appears. Strange how these things work. You do everything you can, and it looks like it's not going to be enough. And then, somehow, for some reason, it is enough. It's beyond me or my skill. Our star, Conrad Nagel, will return in just a moment with a word about next week's show. You Air Force veterans listening to our show, doesn't all the noise these planes you hear in the background make you a little bit homesick? Well, if it does, here's some good news for you. For you veterans with experience and special training are needed now. You can enlist with your old grade or better, skip basic training, and be assigned initially to a nearby Air Force base. And this deal holds good for veterans of other branches of the service, too, if they've had the kind of special training the Air Force needs. If you've had training and experience in such fields as radio, radar, maintenance, weather, armament, photography, and many others, you can build a fine future in our fast-growing Air Force. But why not get all the facts? Just stop at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and find out where you are needed in the world's greatest Air Force. Enlist now. <laughs> program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. The Trial of Gregory Winslow was written by DeWitt Cott. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. Well, friends, we hope you'll join us next week again on Proudly We Hail for a thrilling adventure of the French Foreign Legion. We will meet the besieged garrison at Fort Buadel in the French Moroccan desert. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.